bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 wherever you are and worship.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Somebody let me know if y'all can hear right there.
Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Deacon Luciano, can you bring this over there? The, the two red sides. Okay, let's go. Right there. A little further over there. Over there. Right over there. Like Luciana, right? Yeah, where Beatrice is pointing to. Amen. Yes. Pastor Lena, can I have your phone? Pastor Lena, can I have your phone? Your phone for the mic. Can y'all, can we all stand to our feet so we can all sanctify this place? Everybody, let's all stand to our feet. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven. And let's just talk to him for a moment. Hallelujah. Just got to fix this for a minute. Bluetooth disconnected. Bluetooth hanging. Bluetooth connected. Bless him. Come on, let's just talk to him for a moment. Bless his name. Bless his name. It worked last week. Just got to figure out what's wrong here. Hallelujah. Come on, just talk to him for a moment, you know. Maybe turn that down a little. Let's see if that works. No, I still got feel good. Hallelujah. But you still hear that squeak. Maybe that speaker is on some sort of reverb. Check it out. Well, can y'all hear me? I'm going to get started right away. Now, Jesus, we thank you for your presence, for your love, and for your favor. You blessed us to have a beautiful day, and so we ask that you will be glorified. Somebody lift your hands and say, be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. want to talk to us this morning about growing. Let me start by saying this. Every believer, if y'all can hear me clear, I don't want to be yelling. Every believer has the right, privilege, honor, and responsibility to have Christ grow up in them so that they can live a God-glorifying life where people get saved and they live blessed and God gets the glory in Jesus' name. That's what I want to talk about today. That you have the right, privilege, honor, and responsibility to have Christ, not Jesus, but Christ, but Christ grow up grow in you, up in you so, that you so that you can live a God glorifying life, life where people get saved. Get saved. You, live you live blessed, and God gets, and the, God gets glory the glory in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Many times, Many times believers, believers are not aware, are aware that they have to give an, have account, to give an account for this life. For this life. Lately, Lately 
the gospel has been preached comfortably and people have not developed into ministers. They have been pew warming connoisseurs. If they don't like the word, they go to hear another word. Instead of taking the word, growing and doing it. And I got a couple of things I want to say before I get into this. But the blessing that God has for you as a believer is in the churches of the book of Revelation. We're going to look at it in a minute. But look, you and I will have to give an account for the things done in your church, which is the body of Christ. And it's important to be faithful. How many people are aware that you have to give an account for what you have done in the body? Many of us believe just staying safe and getting to heaven is the goal. That's not the goal. The goal is to get heaven in you so that you can bring heaven into the earth. And so today's message, I'm going to start out with your promise, but it's going to be hard. I got to dig. I believe many believers fell asleep the last four months. They got used to not being in church. Let me tell you what that means. You had no one to serve. You just sat around, listened to the word, burp, and turn the TV. You had no sinners to reach. You had no one to see if you grew. But we're breaking that spirit off of us today. Somebody say, get off me. Just like there are people that sit in a sedentary lifestyle who have gained flesh. There are believers who have gained, excuse me, gained slothfulness. And we're going to break that. And I wrote this. You train harder than you play if you want to win. So my message is going to be very, very hard if you want to win. You train hard if you want to win. Tell somebody. I know they're not close enough, but yell at them. And say, you train harder than you play if you want to win. You train harder than you play if you want to win. So I want to come hard today because I know there's people in our church that are just laid back, getting fat, but not in God, just getting slothful, allowing more sedentaryness get a hold of them. Jesus says in Matthew 12, 1230, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth for broad. So that's a sign. In the last four months, if you have not gathered the body of Christ closer to Jesus, I'm not talking about your personal life. I'm talking about others. Then you have scattered them. You have scattered yourself and you have scattered others. Jesus said it. If you're not with me, you're against me. And if you're not gathering, you're scattering. Somebody say, I'm a gatherer. And I want you to break this off of you where people believe once saved, always saved. No, no, no. Jesus said, if you don't bear fruit, 
break, I'm going to cut the branch off, cast it in the fire. He even said, if you rely on your money and you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of your mouth, out of, excuse me, out of his mouth. So there's no such thing as one say, always say. Jesus said, no one can pluck you out of the Father's hand, but you can leave on your own. And you know, as I get started, let me just give you these goals. This is what you want to hear. And somebody say, this is for me. Only three of y'all, huh? To him that overcomes. Now, to be an overcomer, you have to recognize something is wrong. Something is challenging you. There are so many believers that have nothing challenging them. They're just cruising. I, I, I think of it like a frog in a pot that's being cooked slow. To him that overcome, will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, God told this to the seven churches, which each and every one of us are in. You need to find out what church you're in. You're not in the love of Jesus, frigid air. You're in not in the love of Holy Ghost fire pit. You're in the body of Christ. And out of these seven churches, you find yourself. And he said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Not what the pastor says to the people. What the Spirit says to the churches. He says, to him that overcometh, Will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he tells these people, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. I'm telling you, these are the things you want to amen. You want to receive these. He that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receives it. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken in shivers, even as I have received of my father. Somebody say, I'm he that overcomes. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. So that means there are people whose names can be blotted out. Somebody say, not me, not my name, because I'm an overcomer. He said, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I think I know what it is. Louis, turn that speaker away from me, please, real quick. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame and am set down 
with my father in his throne. Luciano, turn it that way and up. Pastor's a sound man. That way. Right there and up. Turn it up so they can hear. Sorry about that. Y'all can hear now? That's better, right? No, the reverb was the other way. It was too many times. You heard me five times. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcome, and am set down with my father in his throne. So that's the promise that Jesus makes to the overcomer believer. Not the one sitting around listening to the word, enjoying life. They have not overcome. There was no opposition. Your refrigerator is not an opposition. It's your boss that needs to get saved. It's your loved one that needs to get saved. It's your enemy that needs to get saved. Those are the ones that allow you to be an overcomer. An easy life of a Christian is a trap. It's a trap set by the devil. And millions are taking it. Somebody say amen. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Y'all here? So, we, so we're going to look at this. And I, I hope you receive this the right way. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. This is one of Dr. Cheryl or Holly Reed's favorite verses. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as does a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. Now the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. That's pretty bad because you have the average believer that will say, I know God. But God says, I know them that are mine. There are people that like to convince themselves just because they got saved that they know God. If you knew God, you would be studying to show yourself approved so you never have to be ashamed when a hard message comes. And here's the hard part. Y'all over there? Can they, can they hear me, Louis? Can they hear me over there? Because they seem like they got their own conversation going. Ask them if they want the mic. All right. Look at this. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, here's the killer. Here's the killer. Verse, 20. Verse 20. But in a great house. Somebody say, this is a great house. Great house. Oh, nobody over here talking? They, somebody say, this is a great house. Oh, I forgot to start this. Oops. That's all right. Jesus. That started. Somebody say, this is a great house. He said. But in a great house. There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Every church has honorable people and dishonorable people. I preach hard to give the dishonorable 
a chance to become honorable. And I'll preach hard to keep the honorable honorable. We're human. Our flesh, left alone, will die and infest whoever's around. So it says, there's vessels of gold, silver, wood, and earth. You got to ask yourself, what type of a vessel are you in your church? I'm not talking that you, you know how to not sin anymore. I'm talking when people see you. Do they see gold? Do they see silver? Or do they see a, a piece of wood? Or some, or some earth? Imagine you want to get married, and this man comes up to you. You know, he, he asks Brother Napoleon to go to Sherrod Forest and cut down a tree, and he carve a little stick for a ring. Or, or he pack it with some dirt. No, you want gold. You want something to reflect your value. So as a believer, your service in the house of God reflects your value. I didn't say your salvation. I said your value. You're saved by the blood of Jesus, but you're rewarded by the work of Christ in you. You have to set your value. And this is what he said in verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, I just, I want to tell the truth. It didn't say prepared to go to heaven. It didn't say prepared to live holy. It didn't say prepared to be accepted by man. It didn't say prepared to be the pastor's uh, whatever. It said prepared for the, uh, excuse me. It says meet or acceptable for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. How much work have you been doing in the last four months? I tell you, God gave each and every one of us opportunity to get fat and flourish by working spiritually. Now he said, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. And the things that they have to purge themselves from is from profane and vain blabblings. And I want to look at the definitions. I was thinking about Cheryl, because me and Cheryl grew up in the projects together. And we used to enter the building, but there was little things you would sit on called the stoop. But the definition of the word profane, it's actually the word threshold. Anybody ever went into a home and you've seen a little seal on the floor before you go into the door, like a little metal plate, usually in like buildings. That's called the threshold. That's the profane. You step on that to enter into the building. So when you speak profane things, it's stepped on stuff that you allowed to enter, to enter the building. The building. There are conversations are that honorable Christians, honorable Christians will never have. Will never have. Right. But, if but if you don't avoid them, avoid them yes. you will be, you will be a, dishonorable a dishonorable Christian. Christian. And look what, look what he says. There's a definition. I didn't mean to say this, what he said. It's a threshold to enter a building improperly, unauthorized entry, 
and it's profane because it was an improper entering. Reminds me when Jesus uh, at the wedding, a man came into the wedding with, the wrong, with no garment, not with the wrong garment on. He said, how'd you get in here? He said, bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness. You have to fight against profane conversations. And then the next one is vain babblings. In other words, empty sounding, fruitless, worthless discussions. Why are we even talking about that? Check your records. See how dirty your insides are by the conversations you allowed to enter into your ears. Why are we talking about that? I am an honorable vessel meet for the master's use. That conversation is no benefit for me. Nobody hear me. We want to be overcomers, but we allow improper conversations into this building. Now go real quick. Now remember we talked about gold, silver, wood, and hay. Oh, excuse me. We didn't talk about wood and hay yet, but we're going to get there. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, and I have my clock. So if y'all waiting for me to have like seven closes, y'all going to miss. Let me just say hi to some people out there. Hi, Amber. Over here. All right, focus over here. Tell your mother, look over this way. Tell her the service is on this side. Everybody came out here to hear the word. See, it's important that we fight against the elements. Everything wants to distract you. This word will save your destiny. Many of you want somebody to grease your forehead. You should have been all greased up for the last four months. You had no reason for the last 16 weeks to get in the flesh, be in sin. That, that's some pastor got to come in. Karate chop your forehead. First Corinthians chapter 3, go there. We'll start at verse 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. We're nothing. We're nothing when it comes to credit. You may speak, you may water, but it's God that gives the increase. But the bad thing, Daisy, that's her name. All right. The bad thing is you're not even watering, and you're not even planting. How? Oh, what are you? If you're nothing by watering and planting, then you're not even existing if you're not watering or not planting. Somebody say, well, oh, what, Dr. Cher would say, oh, mercy me. What would you say? Oh, oh she goes, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Somebody does that. Ready? I keep moving, moving. Verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. I hope you're hearing this. There's a reward or a rejection. I don't believe the average fat, flourishing Christian is aware that the fat gets trimmed off 
By service. <laughs> if you serve people, you won't get too fat. Because you're sharing the fat. The Bible says the fat is the Lord's portion. So all that extra spiritual stuff that you have is to share. You study to show yourself a proof to share. Now let's get to this because I got so much more. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Don't be adding Buddha, Confucius, Mohammed, Pastor Rich, Benny Hinn, Chicky Chak Chak. Don't add anybody to your foundation. Now here we go. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I don't think people are aware of this. The fire comes from situations. If you don't get into a situation, you don't know if your work is rewardable. <laughs> I used to work in construction management, and we would pour concrete, and you would take a sample for testing. Every message I preach, you should have taken a portion for testing Amen. to see <laughs> come on help me if you're gold or stubble because the fire has to try it James said it like this your faith is much more precious than gold tried in the fire you, you want your faith Test it. You don't want to be rejected by God. What did you do all that time down there? He said, you're going to still be saved, but all you've done gets burnt up and you get no rewards going into heaven. Thank God the spirit of Cain's not up there because some of you will be looking at me like this. They're going to be all jealous of, of evangelists, teachers, because they did not do anything. Now, here's a question. Why did Cain kill Abel? Because he did not give to God what God required. Y'all here? All right, let's keep going. Anybody know where verse I was at? If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. So I'm trying to show you salvation is not rewarded. Thank you. You're not going to get rewarded for staying saved. For staying saved, you just get to go home. But you're rewarded for your works. What are you doing in the body? Every man shall give an account 
for the deeds done in that body. Your physical body has been placed in a local church. Does your church benefit from you? Come on. Getting quiet in Cricket, bro. Cricket, Cricket. I'm a part of this church. I happen to be the pastor. I have to grow just like you. But I tell you this much, I preach enough messages for you to grow, fight, and win. I will not be standing in front of God saying, oh, I was scared. No. Not on my watch. You ain't going to hell. You ain't backsliding. You're not living poor. You're not living in poverty. You're not going to die of some disease. No, you're going to live. Be fat, flourishing, and glorifying God. Gloria Dios. And if you don't know what that means, Gloria Dios. You ready? Now let's just go back up. Verse 9. For ye are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Now, this is real, real important. When it says that you are God's husbandry, it means you are God's cultivation. You're a tilled or prepared field, useful for producing reproducible produce. I'll do it slower for those of you that live in a project, not on a farm. You're a tilled, prepared field, useful for producing reproducible produce. Reproducible produce. You're that field. You can create Christians. Your life is the field of God. And if anybody comes to your life, you can give them seeds and they can grow into children of God. You're God's husbandry. You go to some farms, they have strawberries. Uh, what else grows on a farm? Apples, blueberries, you know, watermelon. You're the field of God and God grows on you. People come around you, they get to grow in God. And they can become a tilled, cultivated field. Now, to produce is to bring forth, give rise to, or yield a good. And it's done through a natural process as opposed to make or manufacture. Some Christians are manufactured. What was the message? Oh, I don't know, but pastor was really feeling it. That's manufactured. There's no produce in that. What was the word about? Woo! Woo, it was high. I'm still feeling, no, that's manufactured. If you don't have the word that was sown, then that field is not cultivated. It cannot produce something for use. Somebody say, my heart is good ground. Bringing forth a hundredfold. But you have to say and accept this, that this body here inside is the cultivated field of God. How did it get cultivated? By studying to show yourself approved. By trans, what's it called? Transforming your mind. See? You transform your mind through the word of God, through the use, and you become the cultivated field. I'm good. Y'all here? And the next thing it says, now watch this. You're going to love this. You got God's building. Now, properly, it's an edifice serving as a home. See, constructive criticism and instruction builds a person up 
to be the suitable dwelling place of God. I don't have to say, ha, the Lord's going to bless you. Ha, the Lord's going to do you good. So for the God gave you a Haiti. I'm going to criticize you constructively to build you up so that you can be a suitable dwelling place for God. Where God says, I'm at home. He's not fighting you. It's time to pay your tithes and offerings. He's got to fight you. <laughs> it's time for you to forgive. He got to fight you. Come on. Why? If God's like, if this is my house, why I got to fight every time Pastor Rich preached something hard? Why I got to fight you? Oh, yeah, I see some of you in your kitchen right now. Get away from that refrigerator. Yeah, they say, I know that. Because the devil knows you. Yo, yeah. So, yo, God's field and God's building. Now, let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was the first part of my message. But I got 10 more minutes before the sun be at high noon. Then y'all see me really lit up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> My pastor on fire. <laughs> Your pastor was on fire. Literally. <laughs> Come on, Mike, laugh with me. They'll be like, roll pastor around. Now, the hard part. Is when we start to look at Jesus when he talks about two things. The five wise and five foolish virgins. And also them that he gave talents to. I'm going I'm to breeze through this real quick. The story with the five wise and five foolish virgins, that when you get home, Matthew chapter 25, it says this in verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, what, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now to trim... I, I, it, I was interested in the definition. When you trim something, you decorate it. You adorn it. Those wise virgins, they had their lamps, and they said, okay, the bridegroom's coming. Let me prepare. I need to go see him. It's dark now. See, Jesus is not going to come while it's light. He's coming after you had time to fall asleep, get fat and flourished and lazy. Jesus shows up. And it said they were all slumbering. But the five wise had oil. But the unwise, now watch this. They said, give us some oil. Now, you can get to a place where you become a manufactured Christian. Go listen, to, you know, go watch such and such. He's going to be preaching on TV. <laughs> go get the word from him. That's manufactured. So they told them, go and buy. And guess what they did, Caesar Beatrice? They went. If you knew about oil, you know you can't buy it. See, oil is the type of the indwelling, empowering of the Holy Spirit. All true believers are indwelt by the Holy Ghost, and none can give their oil to someone else. Come on. They were so out of touch with God. 
that they thought they can get anointed by somebody else. You got your own oil. It's your oil. You can be around anointed people all you want. As soon as you move, your lamp's going out. Y'all there? See, in the lamp, it's a handheld torch, and it's used with a wick, like a piece of string, saturated with oil, the flame of which is fed by the oil. <laughs> Nobody hear me. I'm going to talk to this thing, whatever this is. It ain't working because the sun's going this way. But I'm all right. Watch this. Your oil is designed to light your lamp. Let your light so shine that men can see your good work. If you don't have no Holy Ghost, you can't light your lamp and your works won't be seen. Your works will be just like some worldly person. Worldly people give, worldly people are kind. They do the same things. But when you're doing it from the oil, the light coming up, you'll have a testimony like Jesus. They said, never man spake like this man. Because the world is dark. And you're the light of the world. But this is what he said to these uh, unoiled virgins. Come on. Afterward also, well, the, let me say it like this. When Jesus came, the bridegroom came, he said, come in, with, come in with me to the marriage. He went in and closed the door. The ones that went to get an anointing from somebody else, they finally came. They got something from somewhere. But it says, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. No, nobody realizes the rejection of not having oil. You can't become a Christian without oil. And you're not going into the marriage without it. Jesus tells these people, I know you not. So that means you could be in church, functioning, thinking that Jesus knows you. Like I said earlier, the foundation of God standeth sure. God knows them that are his. Check your oil. How much oil is in your lamp determines if he knows you or not. You do a DNA test, you can see who I, or you can know who I'm related to. Oil indicates your godly DNA. No oil, no relationship to God. Mama amens went down. It's too hot. I'm the one preaching. <laughs> All right. So now the next one. Talents. Jesus gives the analogy that he gives out talents to people. Now this is not giftings. Let me let me get his definition. I wrote it down. A talent was not a coin nor an ability, but rather a weight. It's a certain amount of something. A talent is a weight. It's a certain amount of something. And so here we go. He's given five talents to one two talents to another, and one talent to another. And he says, 
It was done based on their several ability. What they were a bit, where's my English today? What they were able to use. Very important. What they were able to use it was, is what God gives to them. The one that had five talents gained another five. And somebody said, I want to hear this. His Lord, verse, 22, verse 21, same chapter. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter the joy of the Lord. It's important that you hear this today. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. I put a few things in your hand, and you were faithful. Then you know what he says? There was one guy that was afraid to use what God gave him. He hid it in the earth. And God said this to him in verse 26. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. Well, I don't know why nobody said amen. For unto everyone that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. That's terrible. That's terrible. There are so many believers hiding their talent, not knowing it's being taken and given to someone that knew how to use what they had. I hope you're hearing this. This is not for those that want to sit in church all their lives and say, oh, I'm blessed. I got a good job. Hallelujah. I pay my bills. I even tip God. No, no, no. This message is for them that want to train hard so they can win. One hand clap. I'm going to follow those two hands. Three hand claps. Maybe I should preach in. Oh, oh. I'm going to preach well. I'm appreciate it. Hello. <laughs> oh, I used the wrong highlight color. I can't even see the word. <laughs> he said, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't know about you, but the, the unwise virgins get kicked out and the slothful servant gets kicked out. You do not not please God without consequence. He's a God. He's a king. Everything a king and everything God does is on purpose. And if you do not produce from your purpose, what good are you? Isn't he not going to reward you? Some of you work. Imagine if your job checked your produce. And they say, I'm tired of paying you. You're not producing. Come on. I'm almost done. I'm just going to read this. In Luke 16, Jesus gave another story about a rich man who had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So he went up to him and said, give an account of your stewardship. And then Jesus says this, he that is faithful and that which is least 
is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. If you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? What did he say? Can I do it in English? If you can't give God nasty, dirty, corruptible money, don't even think he's going to give you true riches. You're fooling yourself. Actually, it says this. He says, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Your goal in a church is to build your church faithfully so that God can build another church on your life. You're not supposed to just be a mega church. You're supposed to be a multiple church. Because one mega church can't move. But if you have a whole bunch of churches filling every area, come on. So you have to be faithful with that which belongs to another. And if you can't be trusted with giving God his money. Wow, it seemed like a swarm of crickets. And he calls money lease. But Satan makes it the most important in your life. It's the least. So if money is more important than your service to God, you're disappointing God. James said it like this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. And your money makes you worldly friendly. The world is friends with them that have money. Now, I'm not saying be poor or broke. I'm saying make sure you're not a thief. Make sure you serve God with money. Jesus said like this in verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in that money. Maybe I need to spin around. Nobody even hear me. You got to understand, he's trying to get that money out of your hand so you stop serving it. He says, tear down all idols. And if that money is your idol, give it to God. He'll return more back to you so you won't have an idol. All right, let me keep going. And the Pharisees who were covetous, they derided him. Those of you that have a problem with me talking about you giving God his money, you're a Pharisee. Stop being pharisaical. Stop robbing God. Give God his money. You won't be mad at me. Cain killed Abel. I can only imagine what you want to do to me. Look, 15 people just turned me off, Jen. Like I took them. I'm, I'm trying to help you. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You bragging about your money. That's an abomination in the sight of God. That's highly esteemed among men. Oh, help me. Any fellas out there? What do we want to brag about? How much money we got? And God said that's an abomination. Keep your money. Use your money. Thank God. But don't start talking about it. Talk about how much God uses you. 
and how much you give. Believe it or not, I'm done. Almost. I'm not even going to get into the seven churches now. I think I'm done. I think I got one more place to go. I think, I'm not sure. Let's close in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I think I'm doing good. I think I'm only over an hour. Anybody receive? It's time to fight. Time to get strong in God. 2 Corinthians 5.10. Now he that has wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, somebody say, I'm working. Whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Somebody say amen. amen. We labor, therefore, whether present or absent, may be accepted of him. We forget that God has to accept us. Just because God loves us doesn't mean our lifestyle is acceptable. And here we go. We're getting ready to close. Well, I thought we were. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. You're going to give an account. You're not going to escape God rewarding you. Going to heaven is just a part of the reward. When you stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be rewarded for the deeds done in the body. Come on, you're, not, you're going to be able to, you, some of you are going to be ashamed, but God's going to say, lift your head up. You really worked for me down there. And others are going to come to God like this. And he's going to be like, well, who, are you? who are you? You didn't do it. Y'all here? Keep, now watch this. Obey them. No, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Now, he said something very important that most believers don't look at. He said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I preach to persuade us to serve God, to live holy. I'm trying my best to persuade you because God is terrible. When he has to judge unrighteousness, it will be a perfect judgment. Listen. Can I, I got arrested once. And can I tell you why? Because I was a little kid and you know, you're not supposed to sit on the stoop. So the police came and everybody ran, but he called me, he said, hey, you come here. And I stopped. And he looked at me like, well, you, you know, in other words, he, you supposed to, your little kid run. My father told me to obey. Come on. I, he, the police told me to stop, I stopped. And I had to go with him to the precinct. I'm like 11 or 12, so they had to do psychiatric evaluation. But my father would have tore me up if he found out that I was running from the police. To run from the police, I had to be doing something wrong. So I try to persuade the church, God's terrible. He's coming back. 
and we have a work that we need to do. And I'm closing for real because Savvy is counting. Hebrews 13 says this. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Every hard message I've ever preached was for your good and mine. I don't want to stand in front of God and he said I made a weak, sinful church. I want to stand in front of God and then he shows me, look, look how holy they live. Look how unselfish they behave themselves. Look how they kept their oil. They kept their light. So today's message might have been hard, but it's training so you can win this game. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Sit. Come on, lift your hands. I've been the one standing. Put some music on. Come on, let's lift your hands. Those of you that are out there, those that are still watching, if you are not saved or if your oil is low, come on, or if you have, get your mother's music, or if you have talent, or you go to your phone, Sydney, and come on, you got to do something. Or if you have talents that you haven't been using, it's time for God to heal you, forgive you, and set you on fire. Amen. If that's you, come on, just wave your hand toward heaven and say, God, I, I need oil. I need to use my talent. And I need to resist the temptations that the enemy is throwing my way to be lukewarm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father What's anything? Come on, just talk to him for a minute so we can get out of here. Lift your hands and your hearts toward heaven. Those of you that were here, you heard the word. Come on, talk to him for a moment. Turn off the thing. Let me, me Sydney. Give me pass your mother's phone. Come on, just keep talking to God for a moment. You can turn it. Just turn the speaker. No, no, no. You know this song? Sing it. Sing it. Come on, sing.
We got social distancing, so do me a favor. Give somebody next to you a high five and say, we got this. We got this. Give somebody a high five and say, we got this in Jesus' name. God gave, God gave us this city, so let's claim this city for the glory of God. We say that the police are protecting. That feeling when, yep, they've eaten everything. Okay. Keep them full with hot pot. All right, hot pot. All right, hot pot. Let's just, come on, let's pray. Let's lift. Now, Father, we thank you for this city, for our mayor, our police, our fire department, our teachers our street sweepers, yes, Lord God. we thank you for everyone yes, Lord. in this city, yes, Lord God. husbands, yes. wives, yes. children, yes, fathers, Lord. mothers. Yes, Lord God. Father, we ask your blessing yes, by delivering this city yes, from any infections, yes. any diseases, yes. any plagues, yes. any hatred in the hearts yes. of men. Deliver this city, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one. And we thank you for turning it, God. Let no one die. Let no one steal. Let no one defraud. In the name of Jesus. Say, Jersey City is a holy city. It's a God-glorifying city. A God glorifying city. Now everybody, come on, let's all dance and let's rejoice. Get out your comfort zone and act like you had a beat somewhere. Come on, let's dance. Let's praise God. No, let's do it. My God is good.
Come on, celebrate. God's going to heal Jersey City with your worship. Rejoice in God.
say this I got some news not you know it's not the best news for us can y'all hear me Wendy can y'all hear me I got some news important news not the best news for us but um this Friday uh, a great asset no you can stay right there as long as you can hear a great asset to our church is moving Let's have Brother Napoleon come over. Let's just see. He really doesn't want me to do this. He asked me not to do it, but this Friday he's moving out of state. And I just thought it'd be important. Can you come this way, Napoleon, please? I just thought it'd be important. You know, you can't hug him. You know, you, you, you know but this is Napoleon. He brought great structure to us. You on that camera, come over to this side. By God's grace, he used them to, to bring us to the proper levels that we needed to be at. Yes. Thank you, God. And you're going to be sorely missed. I mean, you stayed in the background, but your love came to the front. Amen. So stretch forth your hand toward him. And let's just bless him, his wife, his daughter. Now, Jesus, we thank you for the blessing that he is to the body of Christ. Turn that camera toward it. No, grab the pole a little bit. That's good. He's a blessing to the body of Christ. And we ask that wherever he goes, he'll be a great blessing wherever he goes. But we thank you for completely healing his body. Bless his business ventures. Bless his children, his wife. Bless everything that pertains to his life. He's been a blessing to us. And we ask that that blessing be returned back to him a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Everybody say, we bless you, Napoleon. In the name of the Lord. Go in the name of the Lord and prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. I ain't hugging you because I'm too wet. Come on, let's sing. Come on, let's all celebrate again. Somebody say, God has turned it. Come on, Savvy, we're not done yet. Come on, worship. Let's praise God one last time before we leave. Bring that, hold on, Beaches, we'll put a chair. Look at that on. Bring that chair here.
Thank you. If you're going to bring a gift to God, just put it there. If you're going to bring a gift to God, put it there. That never loses. Somebody need to praise God. so I can dismiss you all since y'all talking already. Can y'all come closer so I can dismiss y'all so y'all can finish your conversation? But stay six feet when it's close enough that y'all can hear me. Come closer. Huh? We got to wait a second. I want to dismiss. 
Last time they everything went. Um, those of you out there, know, can I, I want to, I'm talking to you, but y'all can't hear me. Let's close. We're going to bless the offering. Good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Now, Jesus, we thank you. You give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And you multiply the seed sown. So, Father, I'm asking and thanking you in advance that every seed sown today, throughout this whole ordeal, is multiplied. We think that everyone will own their home. They'll have enough for taxes. Everyone's business will be flourishing. Everyone's child's education will be paid for. We thank you that everyone will be the head and not the tail. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious and kind to you all the days of your life. Say this when we say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. and I can't be cursed, and I can't be cursed. Because, Jesus because Jesus is Lord. Is Lord. You are dismissed. Love the Lord. Good night, everyone. <laughs>